Amanda, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is a crazy time for you, especially, you know, last year looked a little bit different. You're back in the W this year. You're on a new team. Talk to me about what's going through your mind right now. Oh, gosh, I am so excited uh, to be in D.C., uh, to be back in the W. Uh, obviously, I didn't play last year, and that was hard. Uh, but I'm just so grateful for another opportunity to play in this league um, and to be in this team specifically. I've been here now for almost three weeks, came early before camp started, and I feel right at home. So I'm really, really excited. I love that. And you're, you're reuniting with some past teammates too. Has that felt comfortable and normal when you guys are all back together? Yeah. So, um, I'm playing with Christy Tolliver and Brittany Sykes, who are like two of my closest friends. Um, and we both, oh, all three of us were in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, and Christy just got here like a couple of days ago and that was great seeing her. Um, and then Slim, who is Brittany though, um, came, um, yesterday in the middle of my workout and I just ran out to hug her because like that that's my person that's my dog so I'm so excited we haven't all been on the court together yet um, but training camp starts today so I'm really excited to be back out there with them that's gonna be awesome and so last year you you mentioned that you know you didn't play in the league because of because of almost like complications and logistics right because of overseas <laughs> commitment um how were you able to stay focused and kind of keep your eye on the W for this year and be focused then in the off season when there were, there was movement for you. There was a little bit yeah. of time where you were one place and then another place and then another place. Yeah. Um, I think last summer not playing was more so like mentally taking a breather. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's hard. It's hard playing year around. And then all of a sudden, like not being on the team, not knowing how to, you know, like rest and, and recover, but also mm -hmm. stay in shape and, and stay focused. That's so hard when I've never done that before. But I definitely said um, going into the off season now, when I was in Italy, like I'm coming back to the league and I am going to do every and any and everything to stay on a team, but also mm -hmm. have my best year. So that's kind of like the mentality I've been, having ever since knowing okay I'm not playing in the summer last year but like my career is not over because of that and it's only going to get better absolutely and so it sounds like there's this deep love of the game where there's there's no there's nothing that's going to get in your way of playing where does that love come from like when did you first find basketball and what was it about the sport that just yeah grabbed you I mean, I think I definitely fell in love the first time I, I held my own basketball. Mm -hmm. I had never played basketball before when I was, what was I, 10? And didn't know anything about the sport, the game, nothing. And I just remember my dad, like, handing me my first basketball. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. <laughs> like, I just it was an instant love. And ever since then, like, the love has just grown. I've seen the world. Like, I've met people I never thought I was going to be so close with and called them my best friends and family. And I just love basketball. Like, I, it's so corny, but I generally just love the game of basketball. And so you also didn't grow up in the States here. You grew up in Sweden. And so when were you introduced to the WNBA? Because we know that there's lots of overseas leagues. Um, when was the W introduced to you and did you immediately know like that's where I want to be no absolutely <laughs> not so being European uh, I grew up watching Euroleague so like I watched all the WNBA players come to Europe and play and I was like okay cool like they out here like I want to be there where they are like I want to play in Euroleague I, I want to play in the best league in Europe on the best teams um but the W wasn't really introduced to me until I started getting recruited from from different colleges. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> like, you guys have your own league type thing? Um, but yeah, so I committed to the University of Minnesota. And obviously the links were there. Um, 
and they were just so freaking good. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to play in Europe and the WNBA. Like, so I guess my dream of playing in the W didn't really like blossom until like I committed to going to college. So that was the 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 dream of the W, but the dream of playing professionally was that younger? Was that when? Yeah. Yeah. You were for like- sure. <laughs> that was as soon as I started playing basketball and I'm like, all right, I'm sticking to this. My dad and I will like watch your league games, like both men and women. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing Spartak Moscow and Russia play and they had all of these stars, right? They had Diana, they had Sue, they had Sil, they had Becky, uh, Candace Dupree, like they had everyone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm going to be one of them. Like <laughs> I'm going to play out like in Europe in the highest yeah. league. That's great. That's great. So does your does your dad um what like what's it like now to be living this dream and for him to see you like doing this? <laughs> yeah, it's such a beautiful blessing, honestly. Um and it's something that I don't take for granted, but it's like it's so dope having those conversations with my parents, right? Like, I'm really doing this. Like, we really, we really made it together, right? Mm-hmm. And I think for me, making them proud because of all the sacrifices that they did for me, mm-hmm. you know, like taking me back and forth from practices. At one point, I think I practiced with like four or five different teams. Wow. So it would be like practice, 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 like, and in different areas of Stockholm. So my dad or mom would like pick me up and take me to another practice, go make sure my younger brother was okay, come pick me up, make sure I have food. Now we got to get on the subway because we only have one car, you know? It's like they did a lot of sacrifices and I think that's the most beautiful part of it all, that now they can just like sit back and like enjoy it. See, it, it was all worth it. It was so worth it. (laughs) And I, and I know that you said when you came to the States, one of the biggest, I mean, there was a lot of cultural differences, but one of the biggest ones on the court was the trash talking. So tell me more about that. And if there's anything you can share uh, with us. Yeah. So like in Sweden, it's like, you don't really trash talk. And I always been this way. So like, I always (laughs) talk my, my shit. Like, I don't care if you're older or younger. Like, well, at that point, I was really like, I hold my own so I can I can talk. Right. Um, And then I came to Minnesota and I was like, well, everyone does it. And like, (laughs) they really they are really about it. Um, But I remember my I think it was my first practice. at, At Minnesota and one of the girls, she was a junior, she like ran straight into me and I just fell. And she just looked at me like, yeah, this is not your team player. Like, (laughs) you're not coming to take my spot. And I was like, I like it. I like it. So now I'm coming to take your spot. Like, so I think that was like my first like interaction with like American trash talk. Mm -hmm. Like, you are mighty aggressive. (laughs) Who have you played against that has, or with, I guess, you know, you can trash talk in practice too. So who, (laughs) maybe more than, than in games, but so who has the best trash talk game? I think it's Diana. Yeah. For sure. Cause she just like, don't care if she hurts your feelings in, (laughs) in the moment of it, like super amazing person, beautiful. So, but like she can say, and then she like, what what are you gonna do about it like I'm Diana and I'm like you're right like that hurt yeah (laughs) maybe more because you are Diana (laughs) yeah but then in practice for sure Brittany Sykes like Mm -hmm. and we are like super close and she just be talking so much trash and I'm like I'm your best friend like it's practice relax and she's like no yeah. Sometimes I feel like when you are so close to someone, you're like, well, you're still going to love me. We're still going to be friends. So I'm just going to like, I'm just going to stick it in. And yeah, I'm just going to irk you. And I'm like, I guess. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So when you look back on your career, you've had some incredible opportunities, some incredible experiences. One word to describe um, 
yourself as a player at these levels, high school, college, rookie season, and then 2023? Okay, so high school. I would say, can I use two? Like, can we yeah. have the name? Okay, yeah. extremely cocky high school. That that's just that that was just like how I played. Like mm-hmm. I was very cocky, trash talking, and all of that. But I held my own because I knew I was good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then which one was the other one? College. College. Oh, one word. Oh, beast. Mm-hmm. I, you couldn't tell me nothing. Like <laughs> I was really, really good in college. <laughs> Rookie season. <laughs> I want to say something in the lines of humbled. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, I got, I, they humbled me real quick. So that was kind of like, all right, relearning the process and learning how to play with grown women. Mm-hmm. Right. What was the best piece of advice that you got from a veteran in your rookie season that you've held on to and you reflect back on today? Yeah, it was definitely um, Tiffany Jackson Jones. I was in Tulsa and she told me to never lose my light. So, you know, whether things are going good or bad, like remember your light, right? Just stay calm, remember your light. Um, So definitely that. And then... For then, this year, sorry, yeah. I just really want to say this. Redemption. This is my redemption year. I like the sound of that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I like the sound of that. So what so when you're going into the season, um, with expectations for yourself, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you, you know, you don't have to share those with us, but mindset, how are you locking in? How are you preparing for the redemption season, for uh it to be your best yet? Yeah. So this is something that I've been doing ever since I knew I wasn't going to play last summer. Um, and I'm just coming to get what's mine. Right. It's it's not as easy as it sounds, but it's just that I'm coming to get what my, what's mine. And I think definitely being here in D.C. and having these conversations with my teammates already, mm-hmm. like I feel safe. I feel like they know what it's about. Like they believe in me and they are going to push me, but they also support me. Mm-hmm. So like that go, that's going to make this year so much easier because um, I know they have my back already. Mm-hmm. That's a huge relief in a lot of ways because that doesn't, I mean, that's an expectation that people have going into teams, but that's not always the case. And especially uh, in a new role on a new team, mm-hmm. You know, you you never know. So what has been the most surprising thing, and this could be basketball related or life related about your time in DC? Okay, this is an easy one because a lot of teams say like, oh, we are all like, we are one big family. You know, you go in there, you're like, okay, I can see that you guys are close and these people, you know, Mm -hmm. but coming here, like, it's family across mm-hmm. the board. Like, and that was really surprising that it's so genuine. Mm-hmm. Like it's a genuine love, support, and respect towards one another. Like from Coach T as a GM all the way to, you know, the rookies coming in. Mm-hmm. Like across the board. It's like we are family here and we are going to make each other greater on and off the court. So you had incredible advice from about your rookie season. Uh, someone coming into the league this year, what would you tell them? The same thing. Don't mm-hmm. lose your light. Whatever light you have that brought you to this very day, mm-hmm. never lose it. You know? When you when you feel like you're straying from that light, for whether things are hard in the sport, right? You're tired, you're fatigued, you're sore, you're burnt out. How do you come back to it? What do you do for Amanda to bring it back? I just take some time to myself and sit and reflect on why is it going the way it's going right now? Mm -hmm. Um, What happened? How can I fix it? And I also have an amazing group of people like my circle. We are very, very tight and and real. So I check with them, what have I done to act 
to end this, like end up in this position? Where did I go wrong? Where is my focus correct? Like, you know, um, but definitely like taking a minute and just like look myself in the mirror, really. Mm -hmm. And then remember when things were good and mm -hmm. how I got there. So go back to that. And reflecting can be very challenging. It can be one of those yes. things where you're like, did I do that? Did yeah. I do that? Did I really? It can be mm -hmm. uncomfortable. But the fact it that you're- It is. Mm -hmm. But the uncomfortable conversations, no matter what it's about, are the greatest ones. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are going to make us grow. So that kind of leads, you know, kind of into this conversation around the W using its platform. And I know that you're joining a team that the mystics have been vocal. I mean, you mm -hmm. look at Natasha Cloud, who has not been bashful or shy about advocating and speaking on what she believes in, what the team believes in, people have joined around her. So uh, how how do you see your role in the W and on this team in, in speaking to social issues? Yeah. Um, well, one, I think I'm going to fit very well into that role mm -hmm. or system that they have here only because that's how I am. Like I always mm -hmm. speak up for what I believe is right mm -hmm. and how we can make this world a better place, right? So I think now coming into this team with people that are even more open mm -hmm. um, and especially being European, I don't always see it the way Americans see. So just learning more and making sure that I'm very open-minded to what my teammates and team has to say about things and be there to support them, but also like grow bigger in that. You know, that's something yeah. that I want to do. I don't want to sit and be quiet uh, when things are not right. So just standing with them and learning, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to that. And it's such an interesting, I, I hadn't even thought about the different perspective that you bring, bring from, from being European. So mm -hmm. to have that, I mean, that's just going to help everyone grow, right. <laughs> you know, right. there's things that the teammates can learn from you as well. Um, when you look ahead to the season, what are you most excited for? Um, gosh, there's like a trillion things. <laughs> um, well, one, I don't think I have ever won in the arena here. Like, oh, yeah, it's really hard playing in DC if you like play against the Mystics. So I'm really excited to get some, a lot of wins here. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but I'm just really looking forward to like being around genuine and real people that want to see mm -hmm. everyone around them win. Mm. That's, and I think that carries a lot and it weighs heavy on how great this team is in this organization. Mm -hmm. And we are going to do some amazing things. I know people are not really counting on us. You know, I've been peeping comments and all of that. No one's really talking about the mystics, but like, this is a great team. And mm -hmm. now they have brought in some great pieces and I'm really excited about that. So walk me through a game day for you. Do you, are you superstitious? Yes. Do you, okay. Oh, sorry. I, I, I was like, yes. Yeah. Same. So I, I can appreciate that a hundred percent. So walk me through what game day looks like then for you. Oh God. Okay. So we wake up, um, always have my game day coffee. I need to have a coffee on game days, multiple, but then okay. we go to the gym for shoot around, do the same routines. Um, always take a nap. Naps are like very important on game days. Um, and then I like to go to the gym early before the game starts, mm -hmm. you know, just get activated, uh, situated, um, sit in my locker and, you know, meditate a little bit before I head out on the court. Um, but I always, always put on like my uniform and shoes and socks and everything in the same order. Same and I've order. done that for like years. And do you, so what, what about like hair and makeup? Are you? Okay. Yeah. I don't play with makeup unless like I really have to cover up like a breakout or a big pimple. Um, I, I get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and Are you superstitious hair? about that? Like, does it have to be the same or the, like anything? No. Like that? Okay. No. Um, okay. But if we like 
go on the streak and everything is like, we winning, I'm playing great, we having fun. And I have my hair in a certain way. Oh, we rocking with that. Mm -hmm. Like, so not really going into the season like, oh, or every game, like I'm gonna wear my hair like this. It's more so like a feel. Yep, yep. But then if like we play great and now we go on the street, we are keeping the button or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like same with shoes. Mm -hmm. Like I will wear the same shoes until like they fall off. Yeah, I I I think like I don't get how people don't do that. So I I, I get I, that. It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it is crazy. It's crazy to me. Um, and I know you mentioned that the red hair might be coming back. Oh, is this no. too much pressure? Or was that just like a I want it. Okay, oh, so okay. I really want to dye my hair red. I'm really sick and tired of this black. Like it's super cute, but it's time to bring back the red, right? So when I was home before coming here, I hit my um stylist up and I was like, yo, we need a diet. She's like, I don't know, I'm scared, like your hair might break. So she cut a piece and bleached it once and it just broke in half. Oh. Yes, we are heartbroken. So yeah. she told me to wait a year to a year and a half before I diet again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to bring up a, a touchy subject there. It's okay. Every day when I look in the mirror, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> why did but I I back? saw you tweet that. I was like, Ooh, I'm here for that. Yes. And it will look so cute in the uniform too, but. But you know what? It looks cute right now and we're going to run with it. We're going to run Thank with you. it. <laughs> on, on days that things get tough, do you have a mantra that you lean on? This is one of my favorite questions to ask people. I just like to breathe. 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 Um, mm -hmm. My dad always like, I told my teammates, I think I told Ariel this the other day. Um, my parents only missed one high school game. Wow. One. Um, so every game my dad will come and he will bring his African uh, drum and he would just scream like, breathe, breathe. And that has carried me through so much that I actually just got it tatted on me, but in Swedish. I love yeah, that. Yeah, so just breathe. Just breathe. Take a deep breath. That's that's special too. It's really special. That's really. So I you know, we, we talk about the game, the EuroLeague, we talk about the W, we know that it's growing and it's moving the right direction. But from your perspective, what needs to happen for the game to continue to grow and for there to be more opportunities? Yeah, I definitely, I would love to see people, like for us to expand in the W, mm -hmm. um, but there needs to be people who are willing to do the dirty work for it, right? Mm -hmm. Not just saying like, oh, I have money so we can expand, but like you don't want to put the work in. Like you don't want to, you know, take the time to build a nice arena or, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that the players have everything. And I would also, in order for the game to grow, I, I would love to see the WM FIBA come together. Mm. Because it doesn't make no sense for people to get suspended or fined because they are overseas making money um, and playing and also like staying in shape, right? Mm -hmm. So then they come back to the W, they already in game shape. Um, so I would love to see that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. The seven months, you know, I think the outside people don't recognize how long seven months is to stay in shape, to stay, to keep growing skills and things like that. Mm. Like that's a long time. <laughs> and it's if you don't so have a league or something like organized, yeah, that's tough. Um, so talking about, you know, overseas, and I know we've talked about this a few times, but last year when BG was wrongfully detained, you were overseas and you still chose to use your platform to advocate for her situation and to speak on it. Why was that so important for you? Because that's our sister, right? It, it's like, how could I not? Mm -hmm. And especially being in Europe and being European, you know, people look at me. Um, 
in any opportunity that I had to bring awareness to the situation, I try to take it. Um, we went together with the Israeli national team and uh, we spoke to them before and asked if we can, you know, speak before we play the game at home, representing our country mm -hmm. at home. You know, a lot of people, they, they don't really talk, they did not talk about it at home. So it was pretty much like up to us to bring awareness mm -hmm. and show support and love. Um, and then every game in Italy, I wore a BG, we are BG shirt because they, once again, they don't really talk about it in Italy. So it's like, why is Amanda constantly wearing the shirt? Now I can tell you, now I can inform you. Mm -hmm. This is how you sign. This is how you write her letters. This is how you can spread it. Cause you know, you never know who's looking and watching and you don't know yeah. what kind of contacts or whatever they have. Exactly. So it was really important for me and I'm so happy that she's home. What, what is it going to be like to play against her for the first time? I don't know. I'm more so excited to just run up and hug her. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if she's okay with it, but I'm definitely going to run up and hug her. You know what? I right. think she's going to embrace it. Just seeing last week, her embrace the W community um, was special. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. I'm really excited. So Final question for you. If there's one thing basketball related or not basketball related that people need to know about you, what is it? I don't like speaking in front of people. Really? Yeah. I get like severe anxiety. <laughs> that surprises me. I feel like you're, you have such an outgoing charismatic personality now. Okay. No, like <laughs> I can't speak, but like, when all eyes are on me, oh, my palms start sweating and no. <laughs> okay. We won't ever make you do that, I promise. <laughs> I don't believe you guys. <laughs> I really don't. That's what everyone says. And then all of a sudden I'm standing there with a mic. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, sorry, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I will do my best to stay true to that. <laughs> that Thank I will you. never put you in that position. And if I do, then... um. Just give me like a couple of days of like heads up. <laughs> so like the anxiety can go away and I can yeah. practice. I'll and then you can play the back. Oh, great. Practicing the mirror is good. And we, you can play back this clip and say, hey, look, you owe me now. <laughs> so yes, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't. Well, Amanda, thank you for taking the time today and best of luck this season. And it's redemption season, baby. Yes, thank you. <laughs>